Okay, let's try this again here. Finally, there you go. Okay, we're back in business. Make sure everybody can hear me. Okay, great. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and get this uh, training started. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, do me a favor. For those of you guys that are able to show your camera, okay, show yourself on camera, go ahead and do that. That'd be great. Appreciate that very much. Just makes a difference to be able to uh, see you guys versus not seeing you guys, especially if we're on Zoom. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to talk about today. Let me make sure we're, yep, we're recording. I'm going to talk about the recruiting mastery training today. Uh, for, the, for those of you guys that may not know, I've actually been involved in network marketing since I was 18. And so over half of my life, I'm 37 now. And so 19 years I've been involved in network marketing. And I've literally recruited thousands of people myself, frontline. And so I think I've been a part of power just shy of two months. Uh, I got somewhere around 25 recruits personally. I haven't really stepped up my recruiting as much as I, I know I can. My goal is always 40 recruits in 60 to 90 days. Anytime I build a sales organization, my goal is always for 40 people to recruit within the first 60 to 90 days to build momentum. I'm certainly on track to do that. The reason why I haven't stepped it up that much like I normally do, I'm still at 25 recruits, but the reason why is because I've got a couple of deals closing. I, I'm, I'm personally making sales. I got a, a sale right now for about 115,000 that, that is going via um, PACE on the PACE program. And today they have, a, they, they already got approved. They just got that call, that interview call that they got to do with PACE today at 11 a.m. So I'm very excited about that. That's a big, big deal. And so I'm really focused on getting my sales in the system, right? Um, but today, I say all of that to say this, you know, I made my first million dollars in network marketing in one year when I was 30 years old. I've made a few million dollars in the industry, you know, been very blessed. I've had some incredible mentors. But what I'm saying is when it comes to recruiting, it's something that I've got a good amount of experience with. And that's what I want to train on today. As we know, in this business, the bigger the team that we sell, and if we show that team how to be effectively sell solar, right, well, the better that we're going to do financially. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started, okay? So recruiting mastery, okay? So first and foremost, the mentality, right? The mentality of a professional recruiter is that you have to have a prospecting mindset always, okay? And big builders become big builders because they always have their business hats on. Okay, a good marketer sees the world from a totally different perspective and uses that to his or her advantage because opportunity is all around us. That's why it's important to always have that mindset of recruiting. So I'm always thinking of who's a good candidate to recruit. And I always have 10 in play. The 10 in play, and I'm going to get into some of the scripts, some of the things that I say, okay? But it's very important to understand this first part of the recruiting training in order for the rest of it to make sense. Ten in play simply means that I've got 10 prospects on any given basis that are on the verge of joining my team. I also have 10 in play, right? My mindset is to have 10 in play of homeowners who are in the process of getting solar, whether that's sending me their electric bill, whether that's making a decision to go solar, whatever the case may be, right? 10 in play for recruits and 10 in play for uh, customers, okay? So again, the mentality scarcity mentality versus an abundance mentality most people especially when they're new to a business a direct sales business of some sort of recruiting most people have a scarcity mindset that scarcity mindset is like oh my god um hopefully this person doesn't join another team hopefully this person doesn't join another company hey listen whatever's going to be for you is going to be for you okay now, oftentimes when we have a scarcity mindset, we turn that person away. Think about, think about a young man that's 20 years old and he's very needy towards his girlfriend or the, the girl he wants to date. That's not attractive. Same thing with recruiting people. Being very needy is not very attractive. So there's a way for us to follow up and for us to be direct in our efforts to recruit somebody, but at the same time not being needy, okay? Because this SW here means some will, some won't, so what next? I know that I'm gonna to talk to a lot of people 
and I'm going to get a small amount of people to get started, right? That's why I stay in what I call zone one or first gear. What does first gear mean? Recruiting should be the number one answer to all of the problems in this business. First gear means prospecting, following up, and presenting. Whether that's with people you want to recruit or that's customers you want to sell. Okay, prospecting, following up, presenting. So I'm prospecting so I can present and then I'm following up, right? So that is first gear. Let me tell you what second gear is where you don't wanna go to. This is incredibly important. Second gear is a gear where you are managing your team instead of focusing on your fundamentals, which are what? Which are first gear activities. So what are your first year, first gear activities? First gear activities is prospecting. And you should have a daily goal for how many people you're gonna prospect daily, okay? You should have a daily goal for how many phone calls you're gonna do daily. That goal differs depending on your schedule, depending on whether or not you, you do this full-time or you do this part-time. But let me tell you this, you, whether you do this full-time or part-time, you can still do this business. One of the rules of thumb I have for my team is, hey, listen, prospect at least two people per day. Prospect at least two people per day. That prospecting of two people per day could be the follow-up with prospects that you've been prospecting for the last couple of weeks or the last couple of months. But what you want to make sure that you're doing is that you're prospecting two people per day, minimum two people per day. Now, if you want to step it up, you want to have results like a Jonathan Brunasso, right? Like, like, like an Anthony Bonilla, who's closed a couple of deals already and he's building a big team, right? You want to have some results like the results that Robin Mansell is experiencing, some of the results that I'm experiencing, right? My goal this week is to close two sales. My goal this week is to recruit three new uh, people to my business, right? But more importantly, my goal this week is to help have the biggest week that my team made the most sales this week so they can make some money, right? Now, if that is your goal, well, you don't want to just prospect two people per day. You want to step those numbers, okay? For example, today, my goal is to fire off 25 phone calls. 25 phone calls. I've got a couple of appointments, right? I've got a couple of presentations. I've got two guests showing up to to a nice five o'clock meeting. And aside from that, those meetings and everything else I've got to do for the day, I've got to fire away 25 phone calls. That's the way I look at my phone calls. I don't make phone calls, I fire away phone calls. I don't have 52 weeks in a year. I have 52 strongs in a year because every week I'm going strong because I am on purpose. And that is my mindset with recruiting. If I'm offering you the opportunity to join power as a part of my team, I'm doing you a big favor, not the other way around. Now, that's not what I tell the person, but that's how I feel inside. And I don't come from a place of being cocky. I come from a place of knowing I've got the best way to make money from home. In a growing industry that's not going anywhere anytime soon, that pays great commissions, the best company in that industry, and then... I know that you're going to get all of the support and training that you need to be successful working with our team. That is now what, what does that create for me? Here's what it creates for me. It creates a backbone. Write this down. If you want to be a master recruiter, you must have a backbone and not a wishbone. Most people are out there trying to recruit people, trying to build a team, trying to sell but they have a wishbone where they should have a backbone. Like, oh, excuse me, do you think that maybe you could give me a little bit of your precious time to check out this information? That's not the way to do it. If I approach my wife with that, oh, you know, Jennifer, do you think that maybe sometime you could give me some of your precious time to maybe possibly go to dinner with me? Let, let, one thing I'll tell you that's for sure, she would not be my wife today, right? The same thing applies with recruiting, right? You have to, now here's the deal, check this out. Here's one of the keys to developing that backbone, evidence. How do you get that evidence? You get that evidence by showing up to trainings like this, 
by applying trainings like this, by showing up on the conference calls, by showing up on every presentation. Sometimes I get on presentations and I know I'm not the only one where I look at a presentation and I'm like, man, I'm, I want to sign up all over again. I'm ready to go. I realize how good the business is. Then I'm sold myself. When you are sold yourself, you have enthusiasm. The last three letters of enthusiasm are ISM. I am sold myself. Okay? So you got to have that enthusiasm. And you, here's the deal, though. It's hard to develop that enthusiasm if you're not plugging into the business. If you're sometimes plugging into the conference calls, you're sometimes going in. Here's the deal. Write this down. Schedule, power, energy. Schedule power energy. What does that mean? You find out when the trainings are. Every Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific time, this training is going to happen. If you see value in this training, you put that on your planner. You don't schedule appointments for 9 a.m. Pacific time on Mondays. You show up to the training. For sure, every Monday, there's a training at 5 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Eastern, that corporate has opportunity webinar. Somebody may say, but JC, but I don't have a guest. Does it matter? Are you where you want to be financially? No. Do you want to build a big team? Yes. They, that, for those two reasons, you should be on that webinar, guest or no guest. Team or no team, you should make it on the webinar. Would you like your team to show up to the trainings or webinars? Yes. Then you got to show up because people will do. Here's the deal. When it comes to recruiting and leadership, people will do 50%. If you're lucky, people will do 50% of what you do right but they will do 100% of what you do wrong. Make no mistake about it. So imagine that. Imagine if people are going to do 50% of what you do right and 100% of what you do wrong. That means that you got to be on point, my friends, right? So if you're showing up to the trainings and you're showing up to the meetings, your people will show up. Here's the three rules to building. Rule number one. Exposure is everything. You've got to expose people to the information. My mindset is this. I'm inviting people. My job is to invite you the proper way, the proper way, and have you make a decision. <clears throat> tell me yes, tell me no, but tell me fast because I got to go. That's my mindset. Hey, are you interested in taking, finding out how you, you know, how you could, make some money in the solar business or how you could transition to a new career in the solar business and the solar uh, industry. Or are you interested in seeing how much money I can save you by going solar? Watch, here's what develops my mindset. I believe that solar sales <clears throat> is more of an IQ test I'm giving the homeowner rather than a sales presentation. <clears throat> it's not a sales presentation, it's an IQ test. I'm gonna save you some money on what you're currently paying right? It costs you nothing out of pocket. I'm going to lock in your rate and you get 26% back tax credit this year. That's an IQ test. Because of that mindset, I get more bills than the average person. Because of that mindset, I also know I got an incredible opportunity. We are entering the solar boom. Once again, guys, any of you guys that are able to open up your cameras and show your face, please do so. If you can't, that's quite okay. But if you are able to, uh, go ahead and do that. I appreciate that. Rule number two of team building, the fortune is in the immediate <clears throat> and proper follow-up. So exposure is everything, but the fortune lies in the immediate and proper follow-up. You got to follow up, and I'm going to get into that as well. And then finally, number three, you work with the willing. Here's the deal. Some people are going to sign up into your business. They're going to get excited. They're going to say, I'm going to go to the top. And then a, a month later, a week later, they join the witness protection program on you. That's going to happen. They're not going to be around. They're going to be excited and motivated. A month later, they're nowhere to be found. They don't answer your phone calls. This happens. See, it's so important to plug into trainings so people know that these kind of things happen. That way, when it happens to them, they don't feel like they're the only ones this is happening to. By the way, guys, if you guys are liking this information, snap a picture of, of this and tag me on social media, on Instagram, at Mr. Bulletproof Mindset, and on Facebook, JC Rangel, okay? The point that I'm getting to, guys, is this. The people that help you 
get to one rank are not the same people that help you get to the next rank. Or the people that help you get to one income level won't be the same people that help you get to the next income level. That's why we stay in first gear. First gear, what is first gear? Prospecting, presenting, following up. Prospecting, presenting, following up. That's first gear. Remember, that's with prospects for the business, prospects for the service, right? Prospects for solar. Prospecting, presenting, following up. I stay in first gear like the clutch is broken. Let's pretend that this is a car. I don't go to second gear, which is managing my, my team. Now, all of a sudden, I'm not recruiting. I'm not prospecting. I'm not following up. I'm not presenting. But I'm over here. Hey, Anthony, what you got going on? Right? Hey, Eddie, what do you got going on? Doug, what do you got going on? Miranda, what do you got going on? But I'm not doing it. No, no, no. That's second gear. Now you're managing your people. Then what happens is your people will do what you do. Now your people stop recruiting. They stop prospecting. They stop following up and presenting. Now they become managers. That moves you up to supervisor. That's third gear. Once you get to third gear, that's the beginning of the death of your business. It's a wrap. You're going to have to start a business all over again. But if they see you plugging into trainings, taking notes on the corporate calls, on the opportunity webinars, you're recruiting, you're welcoming people to the team. Hey, guys, welcome so-and-so to the team. And then, guys, participate. If you guys got your groups, right, and somebody welcomes somebody, go on there, even if they're not a part of your team, go and congratulate them. Participate. This is what people see. These are little things that make a big difference, and they help everybody in their efforts to build a business. And then number three is work with the willing. Some people are not willing to put in the work. I work with the willing. Here's where the 80-20 rule comes in. 80% of my time is dedicated to 20% of the people who are the producers. That is the case in any sales organization, 80-20. 20% of the people in any organization are gonna produce 80% of the results. And then 80% of the organization will produce 20%. So our time is spent accordingly. 80% of our time goes to the 20 percenters, okay? And that's very important to understand. Work with the willing. Not everybody's willing, and that's okay. And you know that ahead of time, okay? It says here, winning is a habit. Unfortunately, so is losing. Vince Lombardi. You can develop those habits. Remember, first, we develop our habits. Then our habits develop us. What type of habits are you developing in this business? So prospect is everything but the fortunes and the follow-up. Here's the deal. 2% of sales are made on the first contact. Just 2%. I got the deal that I mentioned that has the 11 o'clock call today. I've been working on that deal for over a month. Okay, right when I started with Power. There's been a lot of following up, getting their mortgage statements because they're going pace, getting their income, following up because when we first presented, presented the, the, the service, uh, the husband and wife had to talk. There was a lot of following up, following up, following up. Two, only 2% 2 of sales are made. This is in general in the industry. The numbers may be a little bit different for our company and our industry, but nevertheless, this is in general for the industry. 2% of sales are made in the first contact, 3% are made on the second, five on the third, 10% of sales are made on the fourth, and 80% of the sales are made on the fifth contact. That's why in when it comes to sales, most people fail in sales because most people are not going to follow up more than five times. They don't have a creative way to follow up. This is for sales and recruiting, guys, because recruiting is a sale. One of the things that has helped me out a lot throughout the years is having a CRM. There's some free CRMs out there. I recommend you, if anything, use that. Just Google free CRMs, okay? I think there's one called Soho. It's a free CRM. I used to use that one. That's a good one to use. Now I use Lion's, Lion Desk. It's like 25 bucks a month, but it's an incredible CRM. Find what works for you, but make sure that you follow up with people. So here's a couple of, here's eight tips on recruiting mindset. Number one, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. And you can't say the right, the, 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 this is wrong, by the way. It says here, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person, and you can't say the right thing uh, to the wrong person, right? So here, here's the deal. This is actually wrong. You could say the wrong thing to the right person. <clears throat> you could. 
Yes, uh, Zoho and HubSpot, those are free. Thank you for that. So it, there's a common saying in direct sales and network marketing. It says, you cannot say the wrong thing to the right person, and you can't say the right thing to the wrong person. It's true. Half of it is true. You cannot say the right thing to the wrong person. The wrong person, negative people, not going to be interested. It's nothing you can say to them. However, there are people out there that are the right people. They're open-minded. They're looking for something like this, but you could mess it up. You could say the wrong thing to them. That's why you got to get trained. It says here, the more you say, the less they judge. The less you say, the less they judge. So here's the deal. When it comes to recruiting, I keep it simple. And I'm going to share with you guys what are some of the videos that I use to prospect people. I've created some tools for myself and for anybody that wants to use them. I created, for example, 10 Reasons Why Power Solar. It's on YouTube, and I use that to prospect. I also created a traditional dealer, solar dealer program versus power energy. And I'll briefly get into, show you guys what I mean by that, right? Guys, there's so many creative ways to recruit people. You could put, with this business, you could put ads online on ZipRecruiter, on, you know, Indeed, on Craigslist, right? There's so many ways to recruit people. You just got to treat it like a business and invest in your business. But when I post ads like that, currently and in the past, I do it, I get the leads in, and I got a couple of videos that are designated for them to watch. Maybe the five-minute video that Power has for homeowners, and maybe another one, whether it's a, one of them that Bobby and Charles made, or one of the, the, depends who I'm targeting, right? So I'm targeting solar professionals right now. By the way, out of my 25 people that I've recruited, over 20, maybe 20, 21 are not people from ads, okay? They're war market people. And I think that's an important uh, uh, thing to mention, okay? So when I'm inviting people, I don't say that much. My job is to invite, and again, I'll get into this. My job is to invite them and get a decision as to whether or not they're open. So today I got a friend, who, two friends, who are showing up to the five o'clock call. I just give them a little bit of information and I guide them to the presentation, right? Now, the reason why they're going to the presentation today is because I invited them yesterday. For your notes, I'm gonna give you one of the key notes to recruiting. This is so important. Some people, invite to recruit and others recruit to invite here's what that means today's monday let's say it was tuesday here's what the average recruiter will do it's tuesday we have a company webinar on monday i'm going to invite my guys right now to the webinar on monday which is nearly a week away that's not what what i do what I do is I recruit them this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, whenever I'm able to, whenever we coordinate the presentation. I'll recruit them first. Now I get them started, have them go through the LMS course, have them make a list of contacts. Come Monday, they got their own guests. Maybe they got one, two, three guests. See the difference? Now, how do I recruit them? I recruit them by picking their interest. They're like, yes, I'm interested. Great. If I send you a couple of videos that explain exactly what we do, will you take a look at them, John? John says, yes. Awesome. Then I tell them, I'm going to send you this five-minute video so you see the type of video that we show the homeowners. It's a great video. Then I also have a full presentation video that's 26 minutes long. Could you dedicate 31 minutes uninterrupted to watch this, these videos? Yes, I can. Great. At what time is a good time for me to call you back after you have already watched the video so I could get your questions answered? John says, tonight by 8 p.m. I watch them all. See, I'm setting them up. I say, listen, I need 31 minutes of your time uninterrupted to watch these two videos. Right? So now what I do is I recruit him. For example, I got my friend, Rafael, who's on here. I recruited him this weekend. I did not wait for Monday for him to get on the webinar. Rather, he's already in and he's coming on board to tonight's webinar, but he's going to have his own guest. Let me show you guys this. See this? 
this here. That's a five minute video, 26 minute video, right? I've got on my notes section. So when I got a prospect that says, hey, yeah, I'm interested, send me the information. I go to my notes section. I already got them there. I don't have to go to YouTube. I don't have to ask anybody in any group. I've got here about 10 videos already in my notes. Why? Because I am on purpose about recruiting. Somebody's ready to go, they check out the information. I go to my notes section, boom, copy it, paste it in a text, send it out. Send a reminder, call this guy back at 8 p.m. That's when he said to call him back. Then I call, his phone is ringing at 8.01. Hey, what's up, John? How's it going? Good, good. Awesome. Did you have a chance to take a look at those videos? He says, yes, I did. I say, pretty good stuff, huh? I don't ask, what did you think? What did you think is a wrong question. What did I think? I thought it was too long. What did I think? I thought the guy talked too fast. If I ask, what did you think? I, I'm opening up for him to give me positive or negative. Instead, I ask, I assume he liked it. I say, pretty good stuff, huh? Yeah, awesome. What caught your attention the most? Or what did you like the best about what you heard? See, he may have disliked nine things, but liked one. And I asked him for the thing he liked the best. Does that make sense? So he may be eager to tell me what he didn't like, but I didn't ask him for that. I asked him, what did you like best about what you saw? Well, you know what? I like the fact that we get the cost of goods model. That makes sense. And we split that 70-30. That makes cool. But I've got questions about how the team commissions work. Okay, great. See, now I'm on the right track. The point is I recruit to invite instead of inviting to recruit. Today is a very good day to fire away phone calls and get as many people on the five o'clock call as you can on the five o'clock weather, okay? People will be more impressed by the height of your enthusiasm than the depth of your knowledge, okay? If you're excited and enthusiastic, you don't have to say that much. That enthusiasm gets people curious as to what you're doing. And then number four is success in inviting is based on timing, not talent. Sometimes you're going to invite people. It's just not the right time for them. Maybe they just got a new job. Maybe they just got a raise or whatever the case may be. See, like in January, you may have talked to some people that were closed off, but come March, all of a sudden they're not closed off because their job let them go. All the uncertainty, uncertainty in the world, right? So there's a lot more people now open than ever before. And understand this, there's people a lot more, even when things get back to normal, hopefully very soon, people still know how vulnerable the job market is and people know the importance of building a business from home spend five minutes uh spend excuse me spend one minute with 100 people instead of 100 minutes with one person a rookie recruiter will make the mistake of spending a whole bunch of time with one person i'll share the videos all of the videos on the power haters group okay that i that i use by the way a rookie recruiter will try to convince somebody against their will. In the book, Think uh, How to Win Friends Influence People, I've actually got it right here. If you haven't read this book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, any salesperson, salespeople or not, can benefit from this book, just in relationships in general. Dale Carnegie was one of the richest men in the early 1900s. He wrote this book, How to Win Friends Influence People. It's an incredible book. In that book, he writes, a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. Understand this. We're not in the convincing business. Recruiting is not about convincing. Recruiting is about uh, uh, sharing information and sorting. We're not in the convincing business. We're in the sorting business. I, I ask you a question if you're open. You're not open, no problem, thanks, and I move on. Now, if you tell me, you know what, I'm not really interested in solar because, you know, I got, I, I've heard of some people that they got a lien on their property and it was very expensive and they didn't even save any money. Now I'm listening. Okay, the reason why this person is not interested is because he doesn't understand solar. He maybe heard of an old program back then. I will spend more time addressing those things with that person. Why? Because he has a misconception. But if he just says, yeah, man, no, nah, I'm good, bro. I'm good. I, I, I'm doing great with real estate or whatever it is I'm doing. I'm not interested in anything else. Great. Gone. Amateurs convince professional sort. Also, number six, 
Facts tell, stories sell. When it comes to recruiting, when it comes to selling, facts tell, stories sell. When you were a kid and your mom or dad put you to bed and they told you bedtime stories, didn't they? They didn't tell you bedtime facts. They told you bedtime stories. Facts tell, stories sell. So if I got a customer, right? And he says, yeah, you know what? I've considered solar, but nobody's really, you know, convinced me really to do it. I say, well, you know what? I understand how you feel, you know, uh, but I'll give an example. I've got a customer and I've, even if it's not my customer, you could say one of my colleagues just helped out a customer who had a $200 bill. They brought that $200 bill down to $147 with zero out of pocket. In addition to that, we have a promotion this month where your next year's solar payment is free. So that guy's $200 bill times 12 equals 2,400 bucks. He, we just saved him $2,400 for the year. And when his payment kicks back in, it'll be at 147 instead of 200. See how that works? Stories sell. Facts tell, stories sell. Same thing with recruiting. Yeah, man, you know what? I, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do with all these uncertain times. Well, you know what? I don't know if you're open, Anthony, but in case you are open, the company that I work with, that I'm working with, we're looking for some people and we're expanding in your area. I'm working with a gentleman right now who made more last month than what most people make in a year from home. If you're open to something like that, I'd love to share some information with you. Now notice I'm not needy. I'm simply letting him know. I shared a little story because I understand facts, tell stories sell i'm not, if i tell them all of the details yeah you know because we got this cost of good model and this guy made a lot of money because what he did is he had a bunch of split sales and you know he did this and those facts don't matter what's what matters is the stories okay facts tell stories sell. number seven we talked about this amateurs convinced professional sorts that's why you got to make a big list of people minimum 100 people and sort if you make a list of 10 people and five tell you no, now your posture is different. Your mindset is weak. Why? Because you have a small amount of people to call. But if you make a list of 100 people and five people tell you no, your posture is still strong. You still got 95 people on that list. Even if you call people, here's the deal. I'm going to give you something that anybody can do. You don't even have to call to prospect people right away on solar or on the business. Just call them to let them know that you are now in the solar business. I did that over the last four days. I made about five calls each day, random people that I know. And here's what I told them. I said, hey, Hugh, how's it going? Good, good. Listen, uh, by the way, role play with me. Who Raise your hand if you wanna role play with me and I'm gonna go through what, what I'm talking about here. Not all at the same time. All right, there you go. Jamar, you, you want, let me unmute you. That's all. Can you hear me? I can hear you, can you hear me? Awesome, I, great, great. So let's pretend that Jamar and I are um, friends from high school, whatever, right? Colleagues, whatever the case may be, right? I'm gonna give them a call and I'm just gonna let them know that I'm in the solar business, okay? This is not complicated, right? So I'm not trying to recruit them or trying to sell them. Watch, you'll see. Ring, ring. Uh, hello. Hey, Jamar, how's it going, brother? Hey, what's going on, Jay-Z? What's up, man? I'm uh, man, doing great, doing great. How's everything with you? Man, I'm just maintaining out here. It's crazy in these streets. Uh, trying, to, trying to pivot a little bit here. Uh, got furloughed at, at work, but I'm, I'm hanging in there, man. I'm positive. Man, I'm sorry to hear that, bro. Crazy world we live in, huh? Absolutely, man. What's, go yeah. what's going on with you? Everything is good, man. Everything is good. Listen, I wanted to give you a call. Just take a minute of your time just to let you know, bro. Obviously, with all this uncertainty in the market, uh, I had to make some pivots, as I'm sure you did as well. And I'm basically calling everybody that I know, Jamar, to let them know that I'm now in the solar business, brother. What, for the next 10 to 15 years, I'm going to be in the solar business, helping a lot of people in the solar business. And I just want you to know what is it that I'm doing, bro. That way, in case you know of anybody that may have any questions about solar or may want to go solar uh, to let me know, bro. The last thing that I would want, bro, is for you to have a cousin or a friend or a mutual friend of ours that goes solar 
And, you know, they didn't call me because they didn't know that I was doing, you know, the solar God, business. Yeah. Absolutely. And what, 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 how'd, what, how'd you get into that? You know what? I got a friend that invited me and I've actually been looking into the solar business for some time now. You know, mm. I, you know, I live in California and here. It's a mandate in 2020. Every new house has to have solar. And so the future, that, that's where the future is going, solar. So it's an incredible career path. I'm excited about it, brother. And I, I put my flag down. This is what I'm going to do for the next 10 years, bro. Uh, now, are you, are you installing solar or how, no. how are you involved? So we have the installers. All I do is I, I sell solar. That's what I Okay, have. got it, yeah. got it. Well, listen, man, I'm, I'm a pretty good salesman myself, man. I, I'd be open to taking a look at it. Yeah, we're actually looking for people, bro. Um, so here's the deal. What are you doing today at 5 o'clock Pacific time? Uh, I, I should be doing my workouts around 4, so I, I'll be free around 5. Why don't we do this? We actually have a very special webinar that's happening today with our VP. Okay. And uh, it, it's specifically for people that are looking to get into the solar business. So okay. what I can do is I can send you a Zoom link and I can put you on the list uh, to make sure that you get a spot in that webinar today. So let me go ahead and send you that five o'clock link. Uh, okay. Have you get on that webinar tonight. And then what we can do is after the webinar, like 35 minutes later, you and I, we can get on the phone, get your questions answered. Does that sound fair enough? Hey, that sounds great. Awesome, brother. Let me send you that link. All right, thank you. Thanks a lot, Jamar. So here's the point that I'm getting to, guys. I, I call them just to let them know, hey, I'm in the solar industry. Think about this. If you got into real estate, would it be a good idea for you to let all of your friends and neighbors know that you are now a real estate agent? Yes, it would. Imagine you've been a real estate agent for nine months. Then your neighbor directly next to you lists his house. Would that be terrible? Yes, I would be terrible. And he listed his house because you were not a real estate agent. You know what you were? You were a secret agent. Okay? You don't want to be a secret solar agent. You want the world to know. So if I just call you to let you know, hey, I just want you to know I'm in the solar industry. If you ever know anybody that I always lead with has questions about solar or has any doubts or wants to go solar, please keep me in mind. Right? Okay, cool. But I'm let see, but that opens the door. It's very non-threatening. I wasn't trying to sell Jamar. I was just letting Jamar know what I was doing. Now, Jamar opens up because he doesn't feel see everybody likes to buy but nobody likes to be sold so he didn't feel like he was being sold he just felt like hey jc just wants to let me know what he's up to what he's doing and i'm excited and i'm confident about what i'm telling him okay guys so uh some will some will so what next let's let, let's go ahead okay i'm so glad you said that i thought i was the only one that felt this way now we get into some of the rebuttals right now, you're going to get some of the rebuttals, right? Like, you know what? I don't like sales. Some people may say, I don't like sales. So let's say I'm talking to them about this business, right? And they say, you know what, JC, that sounds interesting, but I don't like sales. Here's a couple of ways to respond to them. And there's a couple of generic ways to respond to them. Man, I'm so glad you said that. I thought I was the only one that felt that way. Watch this. You can say, I'm so glad I, you said that. This business is specifically designed for people that don't like sales. Then I proceed. Think about this. Somebody says, you know what? I, sales ain't my thing. Man, I'm glad you said that, brother. <laughs> this business is actually specifically designed for people that don't like sales. Let, let me tell you why. The way that we work is you could actually get, get involved with our company, start working with us. All you do is submit the name and number of the person, right? Somebody else makes a sale and you get paid a commission. You don't have to be a salesperson. You don't have to be a salesperson. You could talk to them about the ambassador program. The way to me, the ambassador program and, and the affiliate is the same thing. The affiliate pays you way bigger commissions, but it's 49 bucks a month. That's your overhead, 49 bucks a month, right? So, I and, and I let people know that. Listen, you could either make a thousand bucks on every referral, cost you not a dime. But if you feel this is specifically for real estate agents. So real estate agents, sometimes when I'm recruiting them, I've got a bunch of real estate agents that I've recruited. Sometimes when I'm recruiting them, they're like, well, is there any fees to do this? You know what? There's a, a program that has no fees is the ambassador program, make a thousand bucks on any referral. However, there's another program is 49 bucks monthly. Your overhead is 49, but you get half of the commission. The average commission with us is six to seven thousand bucks. So it's up to you. 
If you feel like you're going to be able to refer one person every three, four, five months, then the affiliate model is right for you because there's a, such a significant difference in commissions. If you feel like you're going to refer one person a year, maybe the ambassador program might be a good fit for you because you don't have that monthly 49 bucks. See, I'm very direct. And notice that also when I'm saying this, I'm confident about it. I'm not like, oh, but yeah, there is a $49 fee. No, I let them know that that's what it is. So I'm so glad you said that. I thought I was the only one that felt that way. Feel felt found is always a really good, it's an oldie, but goodie, okay? This business is specifically designed for people that fill in the blank. So here's what I want to do right now, actually. I want to unmute some of you guys. And I want to get into, and we got like two more slides and then we're done. I want to, anybody that has any rebuttals that you're getting when it pertains to recruiting, okay? When it comes to the recruiting into the business, if you guys have any rebuttals that you're getting, I'd love to help you with those rebuttals. So feel free to unmute yourself. Okay, Jamar, go ahead, Jamar. So I've showed it to about five people that showed interest, but said, is there anything more you can send me? So, they, so they've been to the call, they've seen it, they know what the opportunity is. Um, right. They, they came back to me, we, I answered questions. You know, they're, they're interested in, in dipping their toe in, but the next question is, is there anything more you can send me? Okay, perfect. This business is a business of one exposure leads to the next exposure to the next exposure. Mm -hmm. Remember how I said that only 2% of people sign up on the first exposure? So when somebody says that to me, they're open. There are a few videos out there. So for example, um, if they've already seen a live presentation, like the one that's happening today at five o'clock, there's a couple of presentations that I've got out there. For example, and this is why I created this, these, th these videos. There's one of them that I created and you guys could go on YouTube and search it. 10 reasons why power energy. Mm -hmm. That's an incredible video. Now, granted, I'm biased. I'm the one that made it, right? But it's an incredible video for recruiting people. Now I get more into the intricate details. Now I talk about where, you know, where the world is going. Now I talk about how this is recession proof in detail, right? Some of the things that I mentioned in that video are the same things that were mentioned in the webinar video, but it's in a different format and it's a bunch of different information. So 10 reasons why power energy. Another one is for those people that are interested in that have experience in solar, I've got a video where I get into um, the difference between a traditional solar dealer and power energy. Here's how a traditional solar dealer works. You got the company and they got their top guys that make the highest commissions. Those guys are the guys that build the team. So they pay their guys a smaller commission. And these guys try to build the team and they pay them a smaller commission. Well, the guy that's two or three levels deep has no financial incentive to recruit people anymore. Our model, everybody makes the same 70%. So it doesn't matter if you brought me in and somebody else brought you in because you guys came before me doesn't affect my bottom line commissions. So anyways, uh, another video that I, that I have is, um, let me click on it here. It's a five minute video by power. That's a, it's a great video that shows homeowners the benefit of solar. And that's done by corporate. It's done by, by, um, by, uh, our CEO and founder is done by uh, Mr. Thompson and a couple of other people. Uh, I'll tell you exactly what the name of that video is right now. And you guys could find it. The Power Re Revolution. Why zero down solar can save you $1,000. If you just look up the Power Revolution. Power obviously spelled with a U. The Power Revolution. That's a five-minute video. That's an, so if I were you to that question, I would send them the 10 reasons why, and I will send them that five minute video. Does that make sense? Then follow up with it, right? And what I would do after that is, let me introduce you to this gentleman that I'm working with. Let that third party expert ask and answer questions for you, basically to die down. So, so what I would do with that person, if they saw a webinar, then they saw these other videos, I would ask them the question, hey, John, now that you've seen all that information, obviously you've got a certain level of interest on a scale of one to 10, John, one being zero interest, 10 being I'm ready to get started. Where would you rate your interest level to be? Now, John tells me, well, JC, I would rate it at a seven. Great, John. What would make 
what would get you from a seven to a 10? What is it that's keeping you from a seven to a 10? I would just dive down right into it. And right there, either you're signing up or maybe we're going to put you on the back burner and follow up with you in a month. Does that make sense? But you want to use three way calls and zoom meetings. Hey, let me introduce you to the gentleman that I'm working with. Right. And, and but be proactive about, listen, if they already saw the, if they took the time to get on a webinar, then they took the time to ask you additional questions for more information. There's a, the level of interest should be above a six or a seven. Any other questions? Anybody have an objection that they want to uh, address? Okay, I have one, JC. Sure, go ahead, Robin. Um, I have a guy who's a roofer, and I'm seeing this with several people that um, are even real estate agents, and they say they don't want to muddy the waters. You, you, by, talking the about, by talking about something else, they just like want to focus on what they're doing. Okay. You know what, if somebody, and I've had real estate agents tell me that, right, that they don't want to, uh, you know, seem like they're selling a lot of things. And I say, well, let, let me ask you this. Do you, do you have any real estate agents or any other professionals that refer you business? Yes, right? Or maybe you have some people that you refer business to. In case you're open, right, what you could treat me as is just a referral partner. You don't have to get involved in the business. But if you come across anybody that may be interested in solar, Give them my number. What you know? What I do for customers is that right now we have a promotion, for example, and I, I talk about the promotions. Right, we'll cover their solar payment for the next year. So you don't have to be the solar expert, Robin. You could just be the person that knows somebody like me, right? Like for example, for me, let's say she's a roofer, right? Let's say you know, for me, it's a good idea to have a good roofer as one of my contacts because sometimes I get questions. Hey, do you know of a good roofer? And I would imagine that with you, I'm sure that sometimes some people are going to ask you for a good solar person. You don't have to be a part of power, but you could, you know, I will talk to them about the ambassador program. Keep in mind, some people, they're going to be close minded no matter what. They're just, they, some people's mind are made up that this is not something they want to be a part of. That's not only this business, but any business. And I'm okay with that, right? But the only, what I would do is I would address that one time like that and just say, just treat me as a referral partner. Keep me in mind for anybody that may be interested in solar. Right, it's a thousand bucks. It's an extra thousand bucks. Anybody else have uh, any other questions? All right, let's go ahead and finish off this training then. If somebody asked me, oops, if somebody asked me, okay, is this a pyramid? Here's what I tell them: No, it's not. I will stay far away from those things. This is direct sales. FYI, in a pyramid, right? First of all, it's getting paid for recruiting we don't get paid for recruiting and they're not selling any product or service we're selling a product or service i don't have the time i'm so glad you said that this business specifically designed for people that don't have a lot of time okay here's why you know some people that i don't know okay all you got to do is introduce me to those people that you know whether it's for solar or whether it's for the business even if you're busy at work give me the name and number i will call contact them and if they decide to buy or get started, I will put them as a part of your team. So you don't need a lot of time. You got people that I don't know and I've got time you don't have. So we leverage each other. The point is I wanna get them in. Not only that guys, keep in mind, in order to open up the six levels in the comp plan, you have gotta have a certain amount of personal recruits. So everybody's goal should be to get 40 recruits so you can open up all six levels. Okay guys, that's very important, remember, some people that you sign up, they're not going to do much, but at least they help you get closer to open up more levels. <clears throat> Places to network and get leads. BNI mixers. I I'm a part of BNI. Highly recommend BNI. Okay, for getting sales and getting referrals. I got one of the members at BNI referred me to his, his cousin, his ne nephew, who's a real estate agent. That guy's showing up on the five o'clock webinar tonight. Okay, guys. Social media, war market, cold market, online ads. We talked about online ads earlier, right? That works with this business, okay? PS3, I'm gonna speed through some of this information. What does PS3 mean? I pique the interest with a simple invite. I show the plan, whether that's through a pre-recorded video or a live webinar like what's happening today at five o'clock. That's, that's what I mean by showing the plan. And then afterwards, if they have questions and I'm new especially, I get them on a three-way call or a Zoom with an expert for the expert to ask the questions. Here's why this is important, the PS3. 
When I peak the interest, you're gonna see some of the invites right now. They're not complicated ways to invite people. That means anybody could do them. It's duplicatable. When I show the plan, somebody else is doing the presentation for me, whether it's a pre-recorded presentation or a live presentation, it's not me. Then the three recall, they got questions. I do a three recall with, a, with an expert. Here's what you want the prospect saying. Can I do this? And do I want to do this to my friends, family, and neighbors? So if I peak their interest with a simple invite that anybody could do, they think, oh, I could do that. Then the presentation is shown to them by a third party expert. Again, recorded webinar or live webinar. The person says, well, JC didn't show it to me. He just guided me to this presentation. That was a great presentation. I could do that. And then when I had questions, he put me on the phone with somebody else that answered all my questions. I could do that as well. That means that I don't have to be an expert if I want to do this business. I got all the support. I don't have to be a salesperson. I don't have to be a great recruiter, right? I could do this business. That's why the PS3 works so great, okay? Let's go ahead and move on. Okay, so here's a couple simple invites. And then we're, we're gonna be done after these simple invites. Number one is, I got something important I wanna show you. It'll take about 15 minutes and it may or may not be in, uh, uh, for you. Here's what I mean. Say I call Anthony. I do small talk with Anthony, right? About 30 seconds to a minute small talk. How are you? How's things in these crazy times? Great, okay, great. Listen, Anthony, the reason why I'm giving you a call, bro, is this. First of all, let them know. I know you're busy. I am as well, I gotta run, but real quick. The reason why you wanna let them know that you're in a hurry is so they don't give you 21 questions, right? You wanna let them know ahead of time, you don't have a lot of time to talk, okay? So listen, I, I wanna give you, this is for people you're trying to recruit, right? Wanted to give you a call, bro, because I got something that I wanna show you that, that I think is, that I'm very excited about, bro, okay? Some I wanna show you, it'll take about 15, 20 minutes of your time, Okay, if you want to say 20 to 30 minutes because of the webinar, you can do that. Okay, I don't know if it'll be for you or not, but I want you to check it out, bro. Right? If he asks me, what's it about? I'll tell him. Well, look, real quick, I'll just say this much I'm getting involved in the solar business. I think solar is a future. I'm very excited about it. If you're open to taking a look at some information, bro, I need 15, 20 minutes of your time. Right? Simple. I can even mess it up. Hey, listen, Anthony, this may or may not be for you, but I need 15 minutes of your time because I got something important I want to show you. Okay. You could mess this up and still get the message across, right? Anthony Robbins said, complexity is the enemy of execution. Okay. Here's another invite. Hey, John, what are you doing on Monday, Monday at 5 p.m.? That's more important than you learning how to make $100,000 this year. Or you could talk about monthly. Hey, John, what are you doing on Monday night at 5 p.m.? That's more important than you learning how to make $10,000 per month, right? Maybe $10,000 per month is too aggressive to the person you're talking to. You might say that's more important than you learn how to make an extra couple thousand dollars a month part-time, spare time, okay? Another invite that, that I love. Hey, Sarah, let me ask you this. If 20 years ago you knew what you know now about Starbucks or Amazon, and you had the opportunity to invest, would you have done it? Sarah says, yes, of course. Great. I've got something bigger than Starbucks. I got something bigger than Amazon. When can we get together? What are you doing today at five o'clock? Does that make sense, guys? It's a rhetorical question. If 20 years ago, you knew then what you know now about Amazon, and you had the opportunity to get involved somehow or invest, would you have done it? Yes, great, I've got something bigger than that. When can we get together? I've gotta to show you some information. Get her on the five o'clock webinar. Show her the presentation. Does that make sense? Okay. If I could, would you? And are you serious or are you kidding? Let's say for, see, when we're talking to people that we know, <clears throat> when we're talking to people that we know, we know what some of their challenges are. Maybe they got laid off at their job. Let's say I was talking to my buddy, Eddie, right? And he got furloughed from his, from his job, right? And this is a true story, right? If I give him a call, I say, Eddie, how's it going? After the small talk, after I let him know I don't have a lot of time to talk, and I say, Eddie, let me ask you this, bro. If I could show you how to replace your income that you had at your job 
from home, would that be something that would interest you? And he says, yeah, what's up? Then, you know, this second part is, is, is optional, but I like to ask it. Well, great. But Eddie, are you serious or are you kidding? Because I'm, I'm serious as a heart attack, bro. I'm so excited about something. And I think right now is a great time for you. And Eddie says, no, yeah, what do you got? Listen, at 5 o'clock today, there's a webinar going on. By the way, there's a lot of background noise. There you go. Thank you. Today at 5 o'clock, bro, <clears throat> there's actually a webinar going on. I just started working with a new company. And uh, I'm excited. It has to do, it's in the solar industry, bro. What are you doing today at five o'clock? And I get them on the webinar. Or if, again, if the five o'clock webinar is not on, I use a pre recorded videos the way I asked you earlier, right? I get them to look at that. And I schedule the time for me to call them back. I tell them, if I send you this 26 minute video, could you look at it uninterrupted somewhere? Even if, if, if you got the kids running around and if you have to go to your car for 26 minutes, close the doors, turn on the AC and watch the video. Would you take a look at that 26 minute video? Yes, I would. Awesome. Yes. Let me go ahead and send you that video. Go ahead. Yes, I would. Awesome, brother. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna send you that video. When, by what time, do you think you already watched it so I can give you a call back and get your questions answered? Give me a half hour. Sounds good. I'll send it to you right away and I'll give you a call right back. Does that make sense? Keep in mind, some people are going to say, you know what, JC, nah, I'm not interested, blah, blah. Here's what I do. I thank them. I generally thank them. You know why? Because I got a big list of people that I got to call. The difference between a recruiting master and a recruiting disaster is that the recruiting master is not emotionally attached to the outcome. I don't care. Tell, remember, tell me yes, tell me no. Tell me yes or tell me no, but tell me fast because I've got to go. Tell me fast because I've got to go, okay? I don't care. So, boom, a minute later, I'm on another call. A minute later, I'm on another call. I'm on, my job is to fire away X amount of phone calls. I got a list of 100 people. I'm going to just give them a call. Now, there are some people that maybe they're a little bit special, right? Maybe I know that they're not very interested in this kind of business. And if you want to take it easier, just call them and let them know that you are now in the solar industry. Tell them and let them. That's all you got to do. Practice by calling them to let them know that you are now a solar professional. One of the things that I use, and I mean it, I tell my guys. For the next 10, 15 years, I'm going to dedicate myself to the solar industry, and I'm going to be the authority in the solar industry. And I just want you to know that this is the industry that I'm in, in case you or anybody you know ever has any questions or needs when it comes to the solar industry, I would love for you to keep me in mind. Simple. That's a very simple way to approach people. Listen, man, you'll be surprised how many people end up coming to you and saying, hey, tell me more. Hey, I've been thinking about solar. Hey, my aunt. Now, check this out. If I say that to you and you give me a positive response, that helps me go another step forward, which is what? By the way, Gail, we have an ambassador program. If you ever know of anybody that's interested in solar and you refer them to me, we send you $1,000 checks just for giving us a name and number. Then she goes, Really? And also, she takes off her glasses and she's all ears, right? And based on that information, see, I'm taking her temperature. It's very nonchalant. I'm taking her temperature. Now she's like, really? Well, JC, I got laid off at my job. So those thousand dollars could come in real handy. Guess what? Now that opens up a third step. Well, you know what? Somebody in your shoes, what are you doing at five o'clock today? See where I'm going with this? See, I started baby steps. I started with formula, right? Then I'm giving her Gerber. Now I'm going to give her a steak, right? So because why? I'm taking her temperature, but it doesn't feel that way. See, write this down for your notes. When it comes to recruiting, be smarter than your prospect, but don't let them know that you're smarter, okay? Here's why. Here's what I mean. If I come to Gail... 
guns blazing, trying to recruit her, she might be holding off. Because remember, everybody likes to buy, but nobody likes to be sold. But if I just nonchalant tell her, hey, listen, this is an industry that I'm in. I just started working with this company. You know, I'm excited. This is what I'm going to be doing for the next X amount of years. I just want you to know, blah, blah, blah. What, everything I just said, right? Very non-threatening. Does it feel like I'm recruiting? My intention is to recruit. And my intention is, if I don't recruit her, to get her to know that this is what I'm doing, right? But if, if she shows me some interest, oh, really? Okay, great. You know, that sounds interesting. Good. I'll keep you in mind. And if I see that she's receptive, then I'll tell her about the, the ambassador program. The ambassador program, there's no reason to not tell somebody about the ambassador program. It's free. It doesn't cost them a dime, right? Let them know that. But see, your entry is to let them know this is your new career path. And it's okay if your new career path is part-time, by the way. Most real estate agents start their real estate career part-time. This is normal. Okay, guys? A great person to network with is real estate agents. Contact them. Meet them on Facebook. Add them on Facebook. Add them. Once they add you, send them a message. Hey, thanks a lot for, the, you know, for accepting my friend request. How's the real estate business going in these crazy times? Just start a dialogue with these people. Right? Who cares? Make it a goal to add five of them daily. Right? Real estate people are great people. Roofers are great people to, to connect with as well, in my experience. I know a lot of real estate agents, so I connect with a lot of real estate agents, right? But the point is be on purpose. Have a list of the things you're gonna do daily, how many calls you're gonna make, how many people on Facebook you're gonna connect with or social media, right? And just go through your list and do those things throughout the day. How many people are you gonna call just to let them know that you're now in the solar business? How big is your list? FYI, your list should be minimum 100 people. Guys, you want to be on purpose. So with that being said, I'm going to close out the call. We're right over an hour. I'm going to open up the mic. Any question that you guys may have, feel free to ask the questions. And, uh, and then we're going to close out this call. Yeah, I got one. Uh, when, when it comes on to talking to other solar professionals, um, you know, they might be with a momentum and they feel like they're a top recruiter because they're getting grapes fed to them and leads and, you know, they feel like they um, got a chariot, you know. So pretty much um, what, what, what is a strategy? Because usually sometimes um, they try to outposture you. Yeah, yeah. So here, here's the strategy that I would use with them. I said, listen, I understand. First of all, you have to know this. They don't get paid the commissions that we get paid. First and foremost, mm -hmm. you also have to understand that some people, they're perfectly fine with making whatever it is, 50 grand a year, 100 grand a year, 120 grand a year, and just get fed leads and drive around town all day long and do all that stuff, right? Here's my approach to that. I say, here's what I believe, Hugh. With all due respect, I believe that other solar companies are simply creating our future solar reps. And I'll tell you why. Because you can make a good thing. Somebody, somebody has a TV on. There you go. Because here's the deal. Other companies have people that are perfectly fine going around making sales, right? But they're always going to be a sales rep. I'm, I'm talking to you about a company where whatever it is you're making yearly, We've got people making that monthly without having to work it, and without having to drive around town to a bunch of meetings. If that's something that you're open to, I would love for us to have a dialogue. I would love to share you some information. If you're not open to that, Hugh, perfectly fine. Why don't we keep in touch and let's keep, let's keep in touch as far as our progress goes over the next three months, six months, one year. Remember, you can't say the right thing to the wrong person. Some people, they're just closed off. Yeah. One of the things I would also ask is, Hugh, let me ask you this. Do you have a way with momentum to where eventually you can make a six figure income yearly or even monthly without having to leave your house? I like that one. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Because we got a lot of people making multiple five figures. Talk about 20, 30, 40, 50,000, even a hundred thousand dollars from home. They never leave their house. Now, if you got something like that, Hugh, I'd love to hear it because I got something like that. Right. And it'll right. take 30 minutes of your time to see what I'm talking about. Exactly. At that point, Hugh, their ego may say, no. Nah. If that's the case, remember, professionals sort. 
Okay, you're not interested? Next, next. But I add them on Facebook. Yeah. They see my enthusiasm. I, it, maybe right, remember, recruiting is all about timing. Maybe it's not the right time for them. Maybe they went from making $50,000 a year. Now with that, that company running leads, they don't mind working 12 hours a day running leads. My friend Anthony Bonilla here used to work for a company like that. He was running leads across town. Something driving two, three hours to meetings. He's here now. Building a team, closing a bunch of sales, making two, three times bigger commissions. The point is, some people are going to be open and some people are going to take them some time and some people are never going to come around. And that's perfectly fine. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, man. No problem. I like that. Thank you. Okay. Gail, did you have a question? I do. Yeah. What do you say when people ask, I don't get this question a lot, but just in case if um, people ask if I have solar in my house right now, I don't know, but I've installed solar before. How, do, how, what's a good way of answering that? So, well, let me ask you the question. <clears throat> Why is it that you don't have solar yet? Oh, it's more economical. I just moved back down here and got some things going on with that. Okay. I would be perfectly honest with them. Okay. I said, listen, I don't, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't have solar right now. I've got some personal reasons I'd rather not get into. Okay. But I think you and I can both agree that whether I have solar or not, solar is an incredible opportunity, right, for anybody. Okay. You know, just be... Here's the deal. Just have a backbone when you're talking to people. Mm -hmm. I know, you know, facts tell stories. So one of the things I say is, listen, I know some friends who are real estate brokers. They run a brokerage with over 40 agents and they're not homeowners themselves, but that doesn't stop them from making half a million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. Right. It's all about your posture. Facts tell story sell. Right. You have to have that posture. You, you, you feel the bumps back here. Everybody feel those bumps. That's called a backbone. Right. <laughs> it's not a wishbone. We got the best deal out there. When your posture goes up, now you know something's up, right? Any other questions? I, I see Leo is trying to say something, but for some reason we can't hear you, bro. Can't hear you, bro. And it shows that you're unmuted, but we can't hear you. Have him type it in the chat. Yeah, you could type it in the chat, bro. Anybody else have any questions? What about when they see you, how much? Good. What about when they ask you, um, sometimes that's happened to me before, but, um, how much are you making personally? Okay. Or, great. That, Cause great. they might be from another network marketing company. So they try to go in that way to shake you. Sure. Sure. Well, look, here's the deal. Especially if they're in network marketing, it's easier to address that, right? So let's say you're in network marketing. You asked me that question and I just started here or whatever the case is, I'm not making a lot of money yet. Right. I will tell them and I would put it back on them. I'll say, listen, John, I'm not making a whole lot of money yet, but with your experience coming from where you come from, you know very well that the money that I'm making has nothing to do with the money that you could make if you do this business. Does that make sense? There's a ton of people in your company that are making zero money, but there's people that are making big money and the opportunity is the same for everybody. You know, and I, I would call them out on it. Brother, you know, in my experience, when people ask me that question, that's kind of like a, blow off question right if you're asking me that question because you have a genuine interest i'm cool but if you're asking me that question because you're blowing me off bro just let me know and it's, it's quite all right but check this out when it comes to network marketers here's what i tell them how many companies do you know in in the industry of network marketing even though we're not but we're similar how many companies do you know where you can make six figures monthly with less than 100 people it's impossible there's no mlm company you can do that you, there's no MLM company you can make six, even $50,000 per month with a team of less than 100 people. There's people doing that with our company. So when it comes to network marketers, it's one of the things that I tell them. And listen, even if I get started and I'm not making that much money, that doesn't mean that that would be the same for you. It, 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 everything just depends on somebody else. The opportunity is still the opportunity. Anthony, you got a question? Yeah, JC. Uh how do you, how would you follow up or how do you normally do it with the homeowner uh, who you already asked for their information, utility bill, and they said they'll get it to you by the end of the day, end of the week that they're working. Um, and you've asked them like at least twice, but you don't want to be too pushy. Like you're bugging, but at the same time you want to get that information. Sure. Um, how do you do it? Yeah, that's a great question. It's, you know, at the end of the day, it comes through follow up with, with, I, I've, I've sold real estate in my life, right? I've sold a bunch of things and follow-up is follow-up, right? The follow-up starts from being smaller and then the gaps get bigger. 
then the gaps get bigger, then the gaps get bigger. So like, let's say for example, uh, you know, I, I, I got a friend right now who was supposed to send me his, he, t he lives in McAllen, Texas. He was supposed to send me his electric bill about a month ago, right? I followed up with him a day later. Hey, what's up, Chad? Just what, you know, friendly reminder, go ahead and send me that, you know, electric bill when you get a chance. And then about a, three days later, I just sent him a message saying, hey, champ, how's it going? He didn't reply to that message. This happens to everybody. It's a part of sales, right? The point is that after a while, bro, I give them a couple of weeks because again, you don't want to be that person. Now, let's say I give them two or three weeks. I might follow up with a five minute video. Hey, by the way, Anthony, I know you've been busy. When you get a chance, take a look at this video that our company has created for homeowners. I think you'll really enjoy it. See, so now I'm following up with them, but I'm not asking them for the bill. I'm giving them something of value, but I've already planted that seed that if they watch that video, that five minute video, the one that I told you, the, the, I forgot what it was called. I told you guys earlier. Um, if they watch that video, I, I did that to a customer, right? To a prospect. Because of that five minute video, he replied back, hey, do you want me to email? What email do I send you this electric? But see, cause I'm nonchalant about it. I'm nonchalant about it, right? It's like, for example, with my wife, right, when we barely started dating, I remember there was a time that she was kind of like a little bit busy and stuff. And then I sent her a message like two weeks later, something completely unrelated. That got her to reply to me. Same thing I treat this business, right? Sometimes just send them that five minute video. And sometimes it's just going to take you longer. Another thing that I do to, to the power revolution is the one that I'm referring to. The power revolution. That's a five minute video. That's a great video. Another way to follow up with people is this, add them on Facebook. By you adding them on Facebook, if you didn't have them on Facebook anymore, they're only relying on your text messages and calls. But if you're on Facebook and they're seeing, you do a lot of activities, Anthony, of going to the job site. Even if it's somebody else's job site, guys, go to somebody else's job site, record a video on your story and on your feed, right? Take pictures of it. They don't have to know that that's your customer. Does that make sense, guys? They just see that, wow, they think, they may think it's your customer or not. You could say, our company doing another install, and you're not lying. You're saying the truth, right? But the point is, when you add them on Facebook, you're following up with them without following up with them. <clears throat> they're just seeing you. They're, remember, out of sight, out of mind. But if they're seeing you promoting solar, talking about solar, interacting, whatever, all of a sudden, that will get them very often to follow up. And then some people, they're just never going to, right? So what I would do in that case is maybe give them a week or two and then send them that five-minute video and let them know, hey, or maybe you got a good article on solar. Send them that article of solar. So you're not asking them for the bill, but they know why you're sending it to them, and it doesn't feel like pressure. Mm -hmm. One more Thank question, you. and then we're going to wrap up today's call. Uh, okay, can you hear me right now? Yes, now we can. Okay, first of all, I want to thank you for the video that you made and I use it in recruiting. All right. Uh, okay, a few questions. What are your funnels? Uh, how do you get people? Well, I, I, I don't have any funnels as far as like uh, marketing funnels that people go through. The way that I get people is traditional. I uh, post ads. That's one of the things I do. That's not my number one way of getting people started. My what number do you one post ads? What, do you post ads? what did you post your ads? Uh, Craigslist is what I use. Craigslist. Okay. Yep. And okay. so now some people use Zip Recruiter, which is a little bit more advanced, which is great. But I like Craigslist. And uh, honestly, I haven't posted an ad in like two weeks, you know, with this company because I've just been so busy with my people. But the number one way I recruit people is I make a list of everybody that I know and I make those phone calls and I use a CRM and I put them in there. Boom, boom, boom. Right. And I I'm just very good at following up with people. I also connect with anywhere from two to five real estate contacts daily on Instagram or Facebook, I start a dialogue with them. I also make it a point to like and comment their stuff. So I'm, I'm in their mind, in their mind, in their mind, in their mind. After I've done that for a couple of weeks, then I follow up. Then, then I, you may see me in their inbox. Hey, how's it going, Chad? How are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. If the dialogue goes good, I'll ask them. By the way, are you currently working with a solar professional? No, I'm not. Great. Well, you know, I'd love to have a conversation, see how we can help each other's business one of these days. Simple. Even if they blow me off, I don't care. My job is to do the activity, the right activity. That's my job. 
if I'm doing the right activity, uh, if enough right activity leads to uh, 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 production, does that make sense? All we could control, remember this, all we could control is our attitudes and our actions. That's all you could control. Everything is uh, everything else you can't really control. You can't control the results that come, but I could control how much of a productive day I have. Do I go into the day with a great attitude and a champion attitude? Yes, I do. Great. That champion attitude leads to champion activities. The way to create those champion activities to finish your day before you start it. You should know how many phone calls you're going to make, how many messages you're going to send, how many people you're going to call, right? How, uh, what web, like I'm going to get on the 10 o'clock, the nine o'clock power hour and I'm going to get on the five o'clock webinar today and get on those webinars. Boom. Right. All I can control is my attitudes, my actions. One okay, more question. question. Sure. Uh, I, I, have, I have a few questions. Sure. Now, how often you follow up with your prospective uh, recruiter? I follow right. up. I follow up with my prospects until they tell me to leave them alone or until they completely blow me off, right? But give me an example. Say I follow up with you. Let's say you're interested in the business and you don't sign up, but then I follow up with you again a day later. You don't answer. I might follow up with you again three days later. You don't answer me. Now I won't follow up with you for about a week and a half or two weeks. Then eventually I'm following up with you once a month. Does that make sense? And, yeah. and the follow-up doesn't have to be a phone call. It could be a text. Hey, champ, hope you're having a great day. I might send you a motivational quote. Hey, I thought about you when I read this quote. Boom, have a great day. See, that's a subtle way of following up, right? Now all of a sudden the person thinks, this dude JC is cool. At the very least, I'm going to return. Here's one of the things that I do to people that I'm, I'm recruiting that don't answer me. Hey, Rafael, I don't know if I insulted you in any way, brother. If I did, I genuinely apologize. Have a great day, bro. Now Rafael thinks, oh, dang, this guy thinks he insulted me because I'm not answering his calls. That very often gets him to say, hey, what's up, champ? No, nah, man, I've been busy, bro, blah, blah, blah. See what I'm saying? That's tricks of the trade for, for so many years of recruiting. Thank you. All right, guys, we're going to wrap up the call. We went a little bit over, but hope you guys uh, got value from this. I'm going to upload this video on YouTube. That way you guys can share with your teams and stuff, and we're going to uh, add most of these videos to YouTube. Have a great day, guys. Let's go crush it. I'll see you guys on the 5 o'clock webinar. Thank you, JC. Thank you, guys. Thank you, JC. That's You're awesome. welcome.